So, all right. You all wake on the sandy shores of this mysterious island, a land unfamiliar to you, and the jungle ahead echoes with chirps and cries of creatures unheard of by the world you come from. The beach you stand on has pieces of debris and cargo just strewn about as you lay there. What do you do? Uh, yeah, Phasos is going to immediately bolt up uh, and look around uh, the wreckage. Damn it! He's going to get up and he's going to start looking for his jacket and any of his <laughs> instruments. Okay. Yeah. Honeymoon. And I'm like, oh, just holding her head, trying to start shaking sand out of her clothes and looking around, getting her bearings, uh, trying to keep for any weird shit. Attila sits up, notices her coils are empty and starts frantically looking around for more people. Uh, Phasos, oh. you do see your jacket that seems to be like wedged in to a few pe- pieces of kind of broken, splintered plywood. Ooh. Uh, Ooh. Maybe like ply that wood across. Yeah, ply the wood across. You yes. hear a, uh, how as you try to ply the wood across, you hear a slight rip. Ooh. Uh, as as he hears it, once again, damn it! Honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> Honeymoon gets to her feet and sees him kind of, uh, sees the, sees the jacket, uh, and she, she kind of totters over to him and looks over his shoulder, uh, and with a very smug smile, she says, you know, I could mend that for you if you like. Don't you dare touch it. (laughs) Honeymoon (laughs) holds up her hands, uh, like, okay. Oh, in in order to get it out, I'm going to need you to do a sleight of hand check. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh... That's, oh no! That's not good. Oh no! I'm not very good at those. Oh, no. Yeah, as you pull it, the, you hear a little bit more ripping as, as you can see that there is a big like line across one of the shoulders. You're able to manage to pull a majority of it out unscathed, and you do brush off a lot of the sand. But you're gonna need a tailor to fix some of these threads. Honeymoon is just standing there, kind of, just still smiling smugly, and she's uh. She kind of raises an eyebrow and says, Oh, are you quite sure about that? Quite. He, he kind of looks around. Does he notice any of his instruments about? Uh, they would have been kind of close by you, a little bit sanded and uh, sanded up and a little wet, but none the worse for wear, especially your parchment okay. is mostly fine as you kept it close Ooh. to your person. You still okay. lack a writing utensil aside from the, like, really shoddy charcoal that you found, though. Uh, yeah, Phasos is going to kind of go pick up his, his, his instruments, making sure that they're relatively uh, well-kept, but he's going to glare at uh, Honeymoon. Langley, Langley. Oh, how serendipitous it is that you, of all people, would end up here on this magical beach, hmm? That, that, that the one cartographer here who knows what he's doing with his skills and his hands has to, to scrounge, but oh, look at you, you're here with your magic cartography. I'm sure that, oh, when you were doing that little ritual spell there, you weren't possibly, I don't know, summoning the Kraken to be able to get in my way. And he's just very frustratedly, uh, at this point, <laughs> messing with his bits. Uh, Honeymoon just kind of listens with a raised eyebrow and, like, a, lo- a little half smirk. She she just kind of tilts her head with a with a, sm- with a coy smile, um, and she goes, Oh, Mr. Jerain, you think too highly of me. And assume I think so highly of you. And she she just turns and goes to help see what Tibeth is up to, and she goes, Tibeth, darling, are you quite all right? Tibeth is like, um, you know how uh, people like when they go down a water slide head first, and they have like their arms tucked to their sides and stuff like yep. that. That is their exact pose, just face planted in the in the sand. You can see that she made like a slid even. <laughs> And there's like a little bit, like the sand has kind of glassed away a little bit because of her internal heat. <laughs> so she's just there. And then like ever so often the waves come up and like tickle her toes. And like she just instinctively like twitches and goes, ah, ooh. It, oh. But like she's just out cold otherwise. Uh huh. Honeymoon starts to try to dig you out of the sand because if she needs all you fuckers alive. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, hello, darling. Um, How, hi. Are you? Where are we? Um, Honeymoon looks over her shoulder at the volcano spewing golden smoke and says, 
An excellent question, but my first guess would be the Golden K. Oh, excellent! We made it! Where's the ship? Well, and she's like looking look, around, around, around the wreckage. The wreckage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just look around and it's like, Oh, I see. Yeah, um, we're, none of us are quite sure what exactly happened to the ship and the rest of its occupants. With not any even luck, the captain? Out. No, no sign of him yet. Oh, what a shame. Who's the best captain I've served under yet? Uh, yeah, Honeyman thinks, but doesn't say, yeah, and he's my ride out. <laughs> <laughs> but she doesn't say that. No, no, of course not. Um, she catches Phazos struggling with his poor torn jacket. It's like, oh, he looks much more like a pirate now. I think that looks <laughs> suits him. Hmm. I even offered to fix up his jacket for him, but he refused, so. I, I think he should keep it like that. It, it, it has a lot more flair. No. <laughs> I suppose it looks it less like an accountant. Calm. Yeah, it's a bit less lawyerish. <laughs> yes, yeah. I suppose we just gather up every way we can and search around for the rest. Indeed. I'm not sure. Well, I mean, Phazos likes to say otherwise, but I am a map maker, and she looks up at the sky that is. I think you said it, it was distinctly different from the one that we knew, right, Joseph? Yes. So, being a stargazer, as you are, even during the bright daylight, just like how you can see the moon, I'm sure you have some skill kind of figuring out where you are via stars, even during the daytime in some <laughs> way. And you can see that this one, the subtleties and nuance of the sky are very different to you which yeah. is not something that you've ever experienced before, as the sky is always consistent in the lustrous expanse. Not here. Yeah. Uh, Honeymoon kind of pulls out her, her little star map, and it's a, it's a scroll of black silk kind of capped with gold, and just starts kind of looking over it. And she says, Mr. Jerame likes to say otherwise, but I am a map maker, and this place matches no sky I've ever seen. And she, she smiles a little, and she says, and I have to say, I'm quite intrigued. We're on a different sky? Under? So it would seem. Uh, Honeymoon will, will help to Beth up. Uh, and she'll start making her way toward Lotilla. What Lotilla. is Lotilla uh, doing? Yeah, what is Lotilla, Lotilla has doing? Sat down on this chunk of wood <laughs> after going to other every other chunk of wood and flipping it over, and the off chance someone is buried. And her mm. head is just in her hands. Flipping through well. them, yeah, you don't find any person. You do find various different kind of pieces of ru ruined, soiled cargo. And through the searching, uh, no roll required for this because the items are just there for you to find. You do find two potions of healing and uh, two daggers just kind of strewn about as well. Seemed like it may have belonged to someone. And one soaked blanket. They're just uh. sitting on the log next to her then. Yeah. Yeah, Honeymoon will sidle up and she'll be like, find anything useful? One or hand points to the side. Ah, well, better than nothing. And she, may I roll perception perhaps as Honeymoon kind of looks around, tries to take stock of the whole beach, see if anything else unusual catches her eye? Yeah, if you wanted to do uh, a deeper around. a deeper look, yes. yes. Uh, give me a perception. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Bing bong. Bing bong. Ooh, bing that's bong, pretty good. Dong. Yeah, you take a little scan of kind of the, the shore. You take a walk kind of across, staying within eye shot of your companion so as to not lose sight of them. And yep. uh, you do find kind of various different signs of other crew members here. However, they're, the footsteps that were there seem to be covered. You see faint signs of those footsteps kind of around. Um, okay. Seeing as though they were perhaps there a little, a little earlier than you guys, as some of it has been covered by, you know, the wind blowing the sand. Waves washing. You do find a couple of more daggers, so that's four daggers total, yeah. uh, seem to be dropped by, you know, once again, also kind of like chipped up and stuff, but still functional as, a, as daggers. Uh, yeah. You do find some ruined food, various different fruits and vegetables that are not edible, what with how much sand and salt water has been covered through them. Yeah, honeymoon. Uh, she'll, she'll she's kind of kneeling in the sand, kind of with a like trailing fingertips over the the footprints, and she says, "It looks like perhaps some of the other crew members were here, just washed up and left before we did." And looking through this, um, I assume Phazos, you're you're taking in the environment as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Fa uh, yeah I was about to get to that uh, whenever that she was done. Yeah, Phazos is is at this point. Uh, he you know. 
took his charcoal, he kind of sharpened it with one of his daggers, and is already starting to kind of look at the, the coastline and draw some lines uh, and is, is mm -hmm. doing some investigation now, of his own. Now, this is just for convenience sake, that you both kind of get a little bit of lay of the land that you are on so far, as you both now have an idea of somewhat of a yeah. map where you oh. are. Nice. Yeah. Of the nice. K. So far, yep. you have you have mapped out the coastline. Nice. That's about what he would be uh, at, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, functionally, you guys will, this map will come in handy as Ooh. as you fill it out as well later on. I was going to say, do we know where we're at on this map? Uh, you are approximately about here. Ooh. Okay. Nice. Nice. He's, he's getting the sketches down. He's checking his compass as well to see where north is and, and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. is, it, is, it, is it all functioning as he's expecting his tools to function? Yep, very much so. Although okay. this is a different world, it still seems to function with the same uh, kind of rules of physics that uh, the Lustrous Expanse does. Same with you, Honeymoon. Although the sky is mm -hmm. unfamiliar, it is still a sky. It's just, yeah. just going to be about as difficult as learning a different dialect for you. Yeah, Honeymoon is kind of uh, making, like, magicking little adjustments into her star scroll. Um, kind of taking a lot of, uh, a, a lot of, uh, measurement is the wrong word because she's not measuring anything. <laughs> but a lot of references, like, to the sky, where it looks like other things are. Can we see anything else on the horizon? Mm, over the horizon, you do see a few clouds. A lot of them seem to circle around the island as opposed to going around a sort of global rotation. Interesting. Honeymoon makes a note of that. I would like to break Honeymoon from her reverie. Yeah, as Honeymoon is kind of like, she, I imagine she's sort of like writing with the tip of a, a gold claw to make new additions to her star map. Uh, so how, how do you get her attention? They slid through my coils, Honeymoon. Hmm? Oh, who, who did? Oh, I suppose you were sort of, um, I, I don't suppose grappling would be the right word. Holding. They're just gone. Well, based on some of these footprints that I've seen, perhaps they're not gone. They simply got here before we did, and have since moved inward. Or inland, rather. We may yet find them. She looks uncertain, but she'll nod. Mm -hmm. Of While... course, they could all just drowned or been eaten by whatever's <laughs> on the island, too. But one way to find out. To or Beth. Those were the people. Well... Those yeah, Tibet, the people sorry. that jumped first. Well, Tibet, you wanted to do something. Yes. Uh, while Honeymoon and Phasos are doing map stuff, and Latilla is lamenting her friends, um, Tibet is going to like he, she's going to like take a quick like scan to make sure that the other three aren't really paying attention to what she's doing, and she's going to start digging through the wreckage to see if she can find some more uh, ammunition and also rope. Uh, give me. Your choice between investigation, perception, or survival. Perception. <laughs> digging, wow. digging through kind of the various different pieces of wreckage. You, here's what happens. You kind of look through and it seems as though you think you see something, but then you don't. But as it turns out, you did see some ammunition, but you accidentally stepped on it, and by the time you see it again, it is oh, washed no. away and pulled away by the tide. Oh, no. <laughs> no! For, <laughs> so, Shoot! Uh, for the, so, solely for the comedy, since my passive perception is 23, can I have noticed this just to make the, an Anya face yes. at Tibet? <laughs> an Anya face? Uh, hold on. <laughs> Please, I need a reference. It's... Uh, but yeah, no, she audibly said, no, no, shoot. <laughs> uh, Not huh. so no, uh, rope either though, right? Uh, unless you started with rope? No. No. Okay. So yeah. That's all I wanted to do is to bet. Mm, unfortunate luck. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a, so looking for, looking inland, Joseph, what do we kind of see? You see lots and lots of tree line. Uh, kind of looking over with your high as shit perception, you can see that there is some <laughs> subtle change in scenery, I implying 
a slight change of not quite biome, but just terrain. Mm -hmm. There are some parts okay. where the tree line dips, particularly to the right, you see that it dips a lot. And to the left, you can see that from your experience as a map maker and cartographer, and you as well, Phasos, um, you can tell that whatever it is towards the left side seems to be more of a wetlands of some kind. Mm. And uh, kind of straight down the middle seems to be very typical dense jungle. Yeah, honeymoon relays kind of what they've sort of gotten a, an idea of, you know, how you know, to the right seems less tree-y, to the left seems marshy, wetlandy. Straight down the middle just seems uh, just densely forested. And so uh, as we're all kind of powwowing, uh, Honeymoon says, So, I suppose now we ought to figure out how we move forward. With that, I agree with you. We can't mm. just stay on this beach for the entire time. Well, the way I see it, we have three options. Um, we could either try to find the rest of our compatriots by following the footprints. We could try to go straight to the treasure, as it were, the uh, where I assume is held in that volcano over there, hence the billowing smoke. Or we could try to work our way around the circumference of the island to properly map it before we go more inward. I do like the idea of a circumference map. It, uh would be helpful to know the exact you know, parameters about how far we'd have to move in order to cross it, but without mm. any real knowledge of how big the island is, that could take us an, quite a long time. Quite true. Hmm. My main purpose for being contracted here was to protect the people in the ship. I have you three. I would like to follow the footprints. I, for mm -hmm. one, would love to see the treasure about now. Well, there, there has to be some reason for all of this, you know? Well, it, I mean, to, Honey, Honeymoon kind of puts a hand on your shoulder and says, To Beth, we're, we're trapped on an island one way or another. We're going to find <laughs> all of these things. Uh, before we die, right? What, uh, yes. Hopefully. Oh, I, we have no guarantee, of course. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. So, prioritize, you know. Honeymoon looks kind of inland and says... I admit I'm a bit torn. I think that mapping out the circumference of the island is quite useful, but I also think making forward progress directly towards answers would also be good, and I think both the footprints and the treasure we will find further inland. So, personally, I'm leaning towards either following the footprints or finishing our perimeter map. I believe, looking at the terrain ahead, there are some high points of vision. Perhaps we could find somewhere high up that we could accomplish both going inland and being able to see the perimeter of the island. Like sure, the it won't be as... Where well, the yes, treasure the is. Yes, the volcano. <laughs> of course, the volcano. <clears throat> Timoth, we're going to the volcano, eventually. But rushing headlong into unknown danger is dangerous. Just a thought. Good like point, we did Bezos. with the whirlpool just back there. That well, we had very rushing. little we other choice. Additionally, we might want to rest here. Did anyone get injured? Yes. <laughs> yes, I had. I was battered. I got a little injured. I could take a I shot. am hurt. It's great. Yeah, huh? let's rest in the shade over there. You guys spend 30 minutes to an hour short resting, licking your wounds, mm -hmm. making sure all is like wrapping them in bandages and whatever yeah. kind of leftover debris you can find around. You take in your surroundings and you rest up and kind of patch yourselves up. Um, what is the decision you guys want to do? What are the votes here? Mm -hmm. I know Honeymoon said either take perimeter of the island or, or go inwards. Um, mm -hmm. Latilla voted going inwards. Tibeth voted going inwards. So I think that is three votes for going inwards. Oh, I used the wrong dice. I'm just going to Phazos votes for going inwards to and, and specifically inwards and upwards. Upwards, yeah. okay. Might so be I guess to head to the right-ish since yeah, I was less that... forced. I guess that, that means Bezos's. you guys head inwards then, inland? In, inland yeah, is, I, I think we're following the footprints, seeing where they take us. Okay. Right. So you follow the footprints, and because this is unknown territory, we're going to go back to the blank map. And uh, so here, 
we're gonna do another skill challenge. Yeah. You, be you begin your trek through the jungle, charting your course along the way, and you hear the echoes of various creatures. Uh, some of them sound very bird-like, some of them you can't quite pinpoint what they are. And as you traverse throughout the jungle, you start to realize that you can easily get lost and you need some expert navigation to make sure you aren't, you aren't going in circles. The thick jungles of the Golden K are foreign to all of you. It's uncharted territory in every sense. And as a result, it may take you some time to find your heading in it. With six successes, you Holy will manage shit. to get yourself a lay of the land and be able to make a better decision on where you wish to go on the island, in the sense where I will give you options. Six successes okay. will give you the options of where you wish to go. However, with three failures, you will get lost and head into a path you did not choose. Maybe oh, even wasting precious daylight hours while you're at it, which may risk your chances of finding help and a way off the island. Well, half of us have dark vision, it's fine. <laughs> Knowing this, Tibeth, first up, ah! what do you do? Uh, Tibeth, uh... You're Tibeth. She is. Uh, she's first gonna take note that the trees are... Uh, well, actually, can you describe the trees for me? I don't want to. I don't want to assume. Oh, you yeah. said it's jungly. Uh, it's very jungly. So yeah, very, your typical tropical trees, your coconut-bearing, you know, uh, technically grass trees. So, so kind of tall, kind of skinny. Yeah, right? tall, skinny, uh, kind of steppy. You know, like the the ridges that they they tend to have. Perfect. Okay. So then, yeah, Tibeth is going to take note of the trees, and she's gonna go. Hmm. Those are very similar to a uh, crow's nest, aren't they not? And she's going to scurry up one of them to see if she can get a better uh, lay of the land from up there. Uh, so she's going to so, do an acrobatics check. Yeah, go ahead. That's okay. Yep, yep. Nice. That is one success. Very nice. You carry yourself up to the to the top of the tree line, scouring out, and you can see a nicer kind of layout of the situation of the island. Well done. You feed the information back to your party, and they get a little bit better information on the land. Next, Lotilla. I would like to do some athletics to better help clear the path. Ah, okay, yes. Starting, like, karate chopping the <laughs> the the vines out of the way. Go ahead, give me athletics. Yes, yes that's another success. You push Jeez. over logs and broken down trees. You move boulders. You just kind of stomp down firm ground for people to traverse and makes the overall uh, traversal experience for taking in the survey of the of the land a lot easier for your party. Well done. Thank you. Ooh, nice one. Honeymoon. All right. Honeymoon is going to fall back on some, uh, on, on some survival skills of hers. She is going to do a lot of taking account of like sun position, uh, observing uh, um, just the, the foliage, what kind of plants and creatures she sees around, uh, doing her best to keep track of the footprints, which ways they're headed, uh, how old they are. Uh, I would like to use survival, please. Go ahead and give me a survival. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, right. yes. You find tracks and trails. You see kind of where whatever animals were around in this area, like kind of where they use kind of the, the terrain to traverse and just seeing what is around. And you notice some plants that, although unfamiliar to you, have kind of similar characteristics as plants in the real world. Uh, the real world, your world, that you notice might be a little bit dangerous and you are able to swerve out of the way of those as well. Mm -hmm. Good job. Another success. Oh, yeah. All right, Phasos. Here's okay. your chance to make We're up. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. Oh. Come on, Phasos. Okay, come so Phasos is going to um, be studying uh, the movement of the, uh, the different animals as we're kind of passing through. Uh, with his insight on how things move and how things, you know, go about their, uh, kind of what their, uh, you know, their, their body language about, like, kind of where they feel, they, they seem to be feeling, like, more comfortable to going towards. And he's mm. trying to kind of use that uh, to, 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 to figure out where more dangerous parts might be and to avoid them. I like that. Let's you're go. Doing, you're doing the Skyrim thing of following the fox to the treasure. Okay, yep, that's going to be another oh. success. Uh, <laughs> Yay. Very good. You do see kind of the odd animals, some odd creatures around. Some of them seemingly segmented animals that are still holding themselves together somehow with some kind of magical effect. You didn't get, quite get a good glance, but you see kind of the pattern of where they're moving. And you follow them along as you notice the paths that they avoid kind of 
you're not able to see the danger immediately, but following their example, you notice, oh, that led to a large pit. Oh, that led into some more poisonous plants that Honeymoon pointed out. Good job. You're able to traverse the land a little bit more. <gasps> to Beth, you have four <laughs> successes, no failure so far. Yeah. No. Okay. So I assume that we can't use the same skill twice, right? Nope. To Beth, what she's going to do after she's done with her surveying up from the treetops is she's going to change uh, tactic and go on to the ground floor and she's going to help try to clear away any thorny underbrush as carefully as she can without getting hurt herself. So she's going to try to do a sleight of hand check. Sleight of hand. All right. Let's see. Oh! Hey! With a crit, that's going to be two successes. Fuck oh, yeah. yeah. And you clear the path. You stay wary of any potentially dangerous scenarios. You're like about to cut one vine, but you notice that it's the only thing holding up a massive log that's about to topple. And you're like, nope. And you nope. cut something else. <laughs> and you do enough of that that you guys get a nice lay of the map. You draw out kind of the options of what you were able to glean from the island. Three uh, hey. different paths. You have the path straightforward, which is the jungle, very familiar to you now, kind of the most straightforward uh, to follow, kind of you know what to expect now, and you might be able to, through familiarity, traverse through it uh, very easily. However, to the right, you see you uh, have an inkling that it is the path towards a dried up lake of some sorts, where you will not have a lot in your path. However, it will leave you exposed since there's not a lot of cover to be there and potential danger could notice you as this is an unknown island with unknown creatures. But it does give you the least amount of kind of obstacles traversal, uh, traversing it. And to the left there, you know, realize that there's possibly some running water, perhaps a river that will might lead you into some fauna of some sorts, which could be potential danger, but it is also an easy way to keep track of your steps if you get lost. Which so, path do you choose? So I have a question. Did were, uh, were we able to kind of glean where some of those footprints we saw, if they headed in any particular direction? Yes, they headed towards the river. Yeah, Honeymoon will relay this to everyone. I wouldn't have given you that information, but you had no failures, so I think you've earned it. Yeah! yeah. Woo! Even Fezos pulled his weight. <laughs> Hell yeah. You put your back into it. Yeah, I paved the way. Fezos <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, is going to uh, kind of think about it for a moment. Running water is often the place where civilizations would you know, put down their roots, plus it gives us an access to fresh water, if it is indeed fresh. Fresh. So, perhaps that would be our most logical way to go, though I will admit the uh, open line of sight in the uh, dry bed would be nice for mapping. The river could also be useful for mapping. It won't tell us much about the perimeter, but... The useful pathway and couldn't lead us to put any bodies of water. Out of character, uh, do we have to worry about food and water? Like, considering you start like with 10 days of rations, and I highly doubt you're gonna spend 10 <laughs> days here, no. Okay. <laughs> Tibeth then is gonna take this all in. Well, we are most familiar with the jungle, though, since we've been here the longest. And it's the shortest path at this point to the volcano. So I wouldn't entirely dismiss our current path, but if we were more dead set on finding our compatriots, the river might be the best place to go. People don't follow up. rivers. I'm good to keep going that way. Honeymoon, um, she, she considers for a while and says, I think I'm leaning a bit more towards following following the river. Uh, Phaethos is going to uh, kind of take a, a deep breath as he's preparing himself I agree <laughs> Honeymoon gives him a knife cat smile <laughs> He's so disappointed cat. that he agrees <laughs> Ag Agree with Honeymoon or draw 25 <laughs> Phaser's had a full hand Well Alright so you guys are going to head down the river path then 
Yes, sir. Yes. As you trek through the path towards the river, you can see that there are th those strange fauna that you saw. They seem kind of somewhat resembling the creatures that you see in your world. Some of them kind of look like deer, perhaps, but again, segmented and maybe made out of a certain type of wood. Ooh. And uh, as you, you know, before you even get a second glance at them, they kind of dart away at your presence. And you hear rustling in the trees around you nearby the river. Joseph, I'm going to take a shot in the dark. Seeing these strange creatures, how they're made and dart off so quickly, Honeymoon is thinking, is, is wondering about, you know, various planes of existence that she learned about in her Star Druid training. Uh, would you permit me to roll Arcana to see if I might have any inkling as to if we might be on a different plane of existence? And if so, what? Yes, you may. Okay, I've with got Arcana, that. you do know that you have a strong it. sense that this is another plane of existence. It's not one you've heard of. This is, oh. of course, new uh, for you and, you know, as the information of the Golden K was new to you mm -hmm. as well, since it's not a very studied location. The most information you've gotten was from the book and conversation you had with, um, with Captain Rackmorton, as this place is in a land called the the uh, outer sea, apparently. Whatever this place okay. is, that is the closest thing you know to a uh, kind of description for it, the outer All sea. Right. Yeah, Honeymoon ponders this and is troubled, but she's also this very is... interested. This is some odd looking creatures, don't you think? Very Why much so. Like Why do they look like holiday statues? Eh. Have I'm you ever holiday. seen like the wooden deer yeah. that they put out around Christmas time? <laughs> Well, wherever we are, I don't think it's on the material plane. Just then, a Ooh. a creature drops down, uh, yeah. hanging from a vine right in Please front of your God, face. No <gasps> Me? Yep, right in front of your face. Okay. You can see that it is uh, just like darting around and just like drops down right in front of you, and you see this. Hi. Oh! Hi, little oh. man. And this honey, is. Honey moon. Freezes. This is similar to what kind of the, the deer-like creatures look like. Segmented pieces of floating bark and leaves and non-distinct tree fruits hanging, held together with an arcane energy of some sort. And it turns, it turns what looks like limbs around as if they were on a frictionless pivot, kind of spinning around. And it looks like it's got almost like a masky face uh, looking at you with two holes that kind of tilt back and forth at angles, inquisitively looking at you. And the rest of you can see that there are dozens of these hanging in the trees, just looking at you. This uh, is sick. Uh, Phazos uh, kind of looks around. Ah, the natives. Yeah, Honeymoon, like, after she freezes, she kind of stares at the thing, glances away, back at it and says, and kind of lifts a hand tentatively and says, hello. It drops from its vine and kind of starts to skitter around uh, around your feet and just kind of like putting its little hand-like things, uh, kind of very scratchy bark, kind of scratching at your feet a bit, kind of skittering around, and a few other ones kind of start to inspect the lot of you as well, looking around, just checking you. They seem very intrigued. Honeymoon. I'm very thankful that they're very friendly, but I don't believe I'm the best for them to be around. Well, Ch Honeymoon kneels down and kind of holds out a hand for them to inspect. Uh, she's she's thinking of them like when you greet a new dog. <laughs> <laughs> its hands are very small, and one hand is able to kind of like cover your uh, one entire finger, and they're kind of like holding it by two fingers and just kind of tilting it, lifting Hold. it up and down. Yeah, Honeymoon's just letting them like poke around at, like, her hand and her tail and, like, just, you know, and letting them investigate. Perhaps these, uh, natives could be of use to us. Uh, they seem friendly enough. Maybe we could get them to, uh, provide some assistance. Worth a shot? That, I, I feel like they've provided enough already. I feel great now. <laughs> They're horrible little guys. As you say this, my, there's my like, mood has lifted. There's like eight of them hanging up around you. Just like one of them <laughs> is hanging, like just like nested in your hair. There's one just like oh, hanging oh off no. of your <laughs> arm. Uh, well, they they have to be powerful of some sort because this one isn't burning. And she points to the one directly in her hair. Well, <laughs> uh, sh honeymoon uh, shot in the dark uh, and says, 
in a in abyssal. Hello, do you speak um, this language? They all like all of them stop what they're doing and immediately like all center their faces towards <laughs> you. Okay. They don't say anything back, but they all have reacted to that sentence in abyssal. Okay. They stand at um, attention. Okay. Uh, Honeyman kind of raises her eyebrows. Uh, and she continues in Abyssal. Our ship crashed on the beach, and we're looking for some of our friends who might have come this way. Have you happened to have seen any of them? People that look like us. The one that was closest to you, Honeymoon, kind of like spins its like, without turning its body, spins <laughs> the face of it around to, to the back, pointing towards all the other creatures of itself, takes okay. two of its limbs and kind of bangs itself on its face like a drum. And then the rest of them all in course. Uh, and they all kind of skitter away from you and start to all head in a funneled direction. Honeymoon gets up and starts to follow. That was quite the performance you had them do. But uh, what are uh, we gonna... Well, I asked them if they might have seen any people like us. Um, so I guess they might be showing us the way. I trust Honeymoon. them. Yeah. And she starts walking forward. Yeah, so anyone's following. Phazos is going to kind of grumble for a moment and then follow. Not till I hey, you were the one who wanted them to offer assistance, and here they are. Yes, I suppose, but of course. It's Langley, anyway. Sorry, <laughs> right, I get results, bitch. So Oof. as you as you follow them through with your high shit perception, <laughs> uh, while you are following them, they slowly lead you away from the river, but you okay. see something in the water, something big. Oh. And it was watching. Uh, honeymoon, who, who's closest to me? Like, to Beth? Uh, uh, probably to Beth, because she, she seemed unless to be you're, like second. Unless you're yeah. pissing off Phazos. No, Honeymoon's <laughs> busy following these guys. Honeymoon's too busy getting shit done. Uh, oh. Honey <laughs> Honeymoon kind of, like, sees that thing. Her eyes widen just a hair, and as she's, you know, as we're following these little dudes, uh, she leans slightly over to, to Beth and whispers, like, just so that she can hear, I think there's something large in the river that I'm watching this. You don't suppose that might be where our friends had headed to originally, huh? I suppose we'll find out, won't we? In either case, I will keep that information away from Lotilla just in case. Well, I, I don't think that's necessary, but just be on your guard. But these, we'll, these we'll little fellas, they seem to be leading us away from us, so, you know, that goes well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was a hippo. Well, that'd be funny, wouldn't it? <laughs> and terrifying. Regardless, regardless to Beth's concern, is that whatever was in there pretty much killed the crew. Yeah, uh, if these little guys are leading us away and he doesn't want, and, and to Beth doesn't want uh, uh, Latilla to be worried about our guys. As the little guys are leading you, um, specifically you, Phazos, just like mapping the terrain and looking around, you notice that the, the path they lead you, it takes you away from the original footsteps that you were following and footsteps that on closer inspection look more authentic than the other ones Ooh. by the river. Oh. That Ooh. only only inspecting them retroactively do you realize, wait, those other ones don't look as real as these. Ooh. Uh, Phazos is going to uh, notice that gonna note it to himself he's just gonna keep going yep. <laughs> mm. all right so you follow the little guys after a little bit more traversal you come across uh, they they lead you and kind of split after reaching sort of a stop stopping point Plus and they all kind of traverse in like a like a t outwards after they reach the point which is a massive pair of stone doors and it Ooh. seems to lead into some kind of man-made structure of some kind. The stone brick walls that make up the structure seem very, very old and cracked, but covered in overgrowth. And it seems to be holding fast despite all the kind of roots that have been growing into it. And the one that initially came to you, 
a honeymoon, just kind of stands there in the center almost as like a lead and takes its limbs and bangs against its face, uh, its barky face, one more time, and just hops and rolls off and climbs up to the vine swinging out. And they all just kind of sit framing you guys in the trees. Uh, Honeymoon kind of glances between the little guys and in abyssal asks them, are we allowed inside? You see the the main lead one just kind of takes its one one of its fists and just kind of bangs his head. Okay, and yeah, it's still in a vessel. She says, "Uh, I'm going to take that as a yes. Um, stop us if you actually didn't want us to go in." Uh, and she will start cautiously approaching those doors. Um, before we get too close to the doors, Tabeth is going to turn around and face the little dudes up in the trees. She goes, "Uh, thank you." Uh, I hope this is the right way. And um, she knocks on her face like they do with their bark face. Uh, and like makes the noise with her uh, mouth. Yeah, the, the little clicky noise. And... Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, they, uh, they do it back at you. They seem very excited at that. Like, <laughs> hell yeah. Uh, and then she's going to smile and turn back around and go with the party. That was cute. Give yourself an inspiration for that. Oh, oh hell yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh. the big stone doors, you, on close inspection, you can see that it's got a lot of overgrowth of moss, but it looks otherwise sturdy. There's barely a crack in these doors. Okay. Mm. Uh, yes, we should inspect. Yeah, uh, a question, uh, Joseph. Uh, would, it, would you permit me to roll history as I sort of take in the style of the door, sort of the age, and try to compare it against my knowledge of, like, different cultures and architectures and just or any motifs that I'm familiar with. Give me your history if, uh, score, because this is one of those where it's like, okay. even if you fail, we're gonna like take, you're gonna take the time. What is your history score? Plus three. Oh, plus three, that's pretty good. Okay, so this does look like architecture that may be made by people, like sentient, sapient people from your world, from ancient times. You know, it seems like something very familiar for once something that okay. could have been made. It's not one-to-one -one from anything that you've seen in history, but you could put this in a history museum and someone would think, oh yeah, it's from this era. Interesting. Like somebody made doors out of Stonehenge or some shit. Yeah. It's like if somebody made a sequel to Stonehenge. <laughs> Stonehenge 2, yeah. doors. And it's like, oh yeah, of course they would have made a sequel to Stonehenge. They had the technology. Yeah, Stonehenge was so popular. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all that Taurus. Yeah, Faisalus is going to, uh, you know, take a little break from all of his mapping and stuff. He's going to draw the doors uh, mm -hmm. on his map just to kind of get a, a sense of where it is. To be, to be, give you a little bit slight meta information, it is entirely possible that someone from your world could have made these doors. Yeah. Yeah. I wish to touch the doors. <laughs> that was Faisalus. You, you touch, as you lay your place. hand on the door, like the instant, the teeniest atom of your finger touches it, <laughs> an ethereal hand punches you, Holy coming shit. out Whoa. from out of the door, and oh just like you just fall on your back onto the dirt, and the, the ethereal fist just slowly comes back. You don't take any damage, but you do feel like the wind knocked out of you, and all the little like creatures just kind of rattle and like hit their masks, almost in like laughing. I sat up looking very confused. Are you all right, Wait. darling? I Is, was punched by a door. No, I saw. Uh, is the door already open or is it No, closed? it is closed. It is sealed shut. Okay. Well, we have permission to go inside and yet oh. it sucker punches our muscle. Interesting. You see uh, her get up and like go up to her full height. <laughs> oh. I would be careful with how many fists are back there. That's ethereal, so there could be a lot. <laughs> uh, Phazos is going to um, see see all this, and he's going to um, inky tendrils himself uh, using his uh, tattoos uh, mm. as this kind of ink comes out, and he's going to try to see if he can kind of ink his tendrils in between the, the seam of the door. See if they, it reacts to that. You you slowly put your inky tendrils kind of through the to the seam of the door to try and maybe wedge it in, and the same thing happens. A big fist, ethereal fist, comes almost like from through the door, as big as you just boom, knocks you on your butt. 
I was about to, my second question was going to be, how big is this fist? Oh, the fist uh, is like massive. It's like one finger is like the size of your arm. Okay. Touching it I was gonna... is not the answer. That would um, be the same. Hmm. Honeymoon uh, kind of turns her turns toward the, the little dudes hanging around in the trees, and she gives them a, a, a broad smile, uh, and she says, um... It seems to be some sort of game to get in, isn't it? I like games. Won't you teach us how to play? In a bizzle. <laughs> Give me a persuasion. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're having, they think it's too funny to watch us get punched. It, that's exactly what they think. They, <laughs> they kind of rattle with the same kind of, uh, l kind of fun look that they gave when... Lotilla was knocked on her butt, and also Phazos as well. They all seem to be enjoying this very much. I do not have a butt. Well. <laughs> on your snake's <laughs> tail. <laughs> um, mm. Do, mm. Ma would you permit me to roll Arcana to see if I might uh, have any inkling how to fucking handle this? Yes. While she's doing that, uh, Tibet yep. is going to go grab a stick. Well... <laughs> Bad rolls had to come in sometime. All right, Arcana, you can tell that this might need some kind of very specific ritual. What that might be, who knows? Mm -hmm. Tibeth, as as you're wrapping up your Arcana check, Tibeth returns with her stick, goes, let's try this. And she's going to like, at full extension of her arm and the stick, gently tap the door. You think, tap the door. And the fist comes out and punches you. Oh, <laughs> God. Jesus. And you can hear uh, both uh, Lotilla and Honeymoon. You hear in Abyssal Ooh. such rudeness. I was uh, trying to knock. Not Honeymoon. You can't hear it. <laughs> Honeymoon steps up to the door and not touching it, but curtsies and then holds out her hand. A tiny... Uh, smaller in comparison, ethereal hand comes out and takes it, shakes it, and the doors open. <laughs> Honeymoon uh, throws the group a, a very coy smile over her shoulder and says, Well, shall we? And she starts walking in. <laughs> oh, did, did anybody? The what? door spoke. Oh, I see. <laughs> well, <laughs> she's going to get up, dust herself off, uh, look back to the to the little dudes. Uh, what are they doing now? Uh, they all seem to be satisfied. You see they're starting to kind of disperse. Uh, a few of them do a little knocks against their mask amongst <laughs> themselves, kind of communicating. A few of them stay and watch for a little bit, but it seems they've had their fun. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, she's going to cast aside her stick and, and join uh, Langley inside. Yeah, and Phasos is going to get up and dust himself <laughs> off. Sigh again, because Langley's just <laughs> solving all the problem. <laughs> yep, he mutters it under his breath as he walks in, taking Good. detailed notes as he does so. Dinkleberg. I'm beginning to understand the distaste. <laughs> And what? Hey. Hey. She can also go in. Hey. All right. Um, mm -hmm. I was going to say, you could start like taking uh, that fucking D4 psychic damage every time <laughs> Honeymoon does something <laughs> <laughs> successful. <laughs> oh, likely. Okay, fuck you guys. I'm, honeymoon's a delight. <laughs> she is a delight. No, I'm saying, I'm just saying to, to, to further funny. enforce the, the, the schism you two have. Yeah. You guys head inside, and as you all step in, the doors behind you immediately close shut. Boom! Good. And a lot of dust kind of comes up around you. It is very dusty and musty, and the only dim light that comes through are the cracks in the ceiling of the stone structure. And I'm going to bring you over to another map. Oh, are you? Oh, welcome to the dungeon. Straight ahead, you can see that there is kind of a stony hallway with a creature that you would have heard of from your world. You can see that Ooh. there is a slime oh of some God. sorts. Oh no. Is that a cube of the gelatinous variety? It is not oh, a cube no. of the gelatinous variety. Uh, I will not say what specifically it is unless uh, one of you does, I don't know, like a, 
a martial check, I guess, or, or intelligence ch check high enough. It's and also, you can see on the ground this green stuff right here, that is all moss. Just so you know, oh, whenever oh. you see green on the map, that is moss overgrown over this stony tiled floor. Oh, I thought it was just sliming. I also thought it was just sliming. I thought it was dirty water. <laughs> okay, moss. Well, um... Moss, slime, take your pick of, like, slippery <laughs> substance from the jungle. Sure. Um, I can try to roll a little, just a little int check, see if I've, uh, it can deduce anything about this fucking slime. Yeah, why not? Alright. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Youch. It sure is a slime. Yeah. <laughs> Some kind of ooze. So, it it's fairly dark in here, right? Uh, dark, but even if you don't have dark vision, light enough from the beams of light from the cracks in the ceiling that you can see. It's reflecting off of the stone enough that, uh, it is illuminating the place that you, there's no need for a torch or anything like that. So, like, uh, Indiana Jones dungeon, Yeah, yeah, essentially. yeah. I'll I don't try know. <laughs> Give me an in. Better. Okay. You know, well, times better. you know what this is not? It's definitely not a gelatinous cube. You know that <laughs> Fuck. this thing um, is something kind of that has been studied around in your world that this thing, whatever it is, it is fairly passive so long as you don't like mess with it. Oh, okay. I, I'm going to gonna... relay this. Don't don't okay. poke the slime, please. Well, considering okay. everything in here has been responding to Abyssal, do you think it also speaks Abyssal? Um, I don't I, know if it's that smart. No. Also, you, out of character, you know does it else? notice us already? Uh, you can see that it's got a couple of floating eyeballs just kind of like sifting back and forth around in its slime. It doesn't look like it's taken notice of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do either uh, one of you other two want to try to roll an it check, see if you know anything else about it? Sure. I will say that there's no way that Tadash <laughs> will know anything about this. Yes, Phazos! <laughs> That's what we like to see. Phazos, you know exactly what this is. This is what's called a glabagool. What the fuck? No. Glabagool. A glabagool. No fucking. No. That's not a real no word. Shot. <laughs> <laughs> no what, what, shot. No so, shot. So, so what is a glabagool? A glabagool is a kind of sentient and uh, aware ooze that mostly tries to keep to itself. Uh, it, much like a gelatinous cube, tries to, you know, eats on prey whenever it needs to, to grow and consume and continue living on its life. But, you know, just like most animals, if it does not see you as a threat, will not hunt you down. Great. All right. No Bezos fucking is way. To... This is a real goddamn monster. And there's <laughs> images it all over Google for it. God damn it. <laughs> That's what it, I picked it because it sounded funny. Yeah, yeah that's hilarious. <laughs> I will give uh, you that. Uh, Phazos will will uh, kind of look at it, and be like, "We're fine. Just be cool. We'll walk right by it. You know, say hello if you'd like. It's sentient enough. It might, you know, care about a greeting, but for the most part, we should be fine. Just being non-threatening, which I, of course, excel at." <laughs> Attila will nod at this and make her way to the moss. Okay. As you step on the moss, I will let you now uh, know now that uh, this is only relevant in combat because out of combat, I'm just going to assume that you're going to do the careful thing. And that is, if you are walking on it normally, every space you move, you will have to make a dex check or fall prone. However, if you opt to move on it like it's difficult terrain, you will not, you know, have to make that check. So it is okay, difficult. So it is optional difficult terrain with the chance of right. slipping and falling. Okay. Is it a dex check every five feet, or is it dex check for that movement? If you're that like you rushing, every every not... five feet you step on it, that okay. is not difficult terrain movement. Yeah. Okay. So you would um, have to use double your move speed in combat to get through if you don't want to risk that. Yeah. Honeyman yeah. is having a horrible time in her high heels. <laughs> um, <laughs> you see, there's a puff, and then Latilla like reaches her arm back. Uh, oh, <laughs> I got you. Oh, that's so sweet of you, darling. Honeymoon takes it and it grips your firm snuzzles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and and just making sure as we're walking past it, it isn't seeming to get agitated at us. Correct? No, in fact, actually, it looks a little intrigued. 
And as you walk past, you can see the floating little eyeballs and the kind of gelatinous body st slightly shift a little a little bit to the point where like it would have covered this space, but the, the floor of the body would still be here, but it's just kind of like shifting <laughs> and moving, Looking. inspecting on you guys as it is uh, kind of very intrigued by what you are. I don't it's know. A it's a very afternoon. curious creature. I, I would want to say a good afternoon in Abyssal. It tilts its head to the side, almost like it's tipping its hat. Oh, oh. Thank you. What a friendly yeah. cube. Yeah. <laughs> In Abyssal Honeymoon says, just passing through. Um, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. It hurries behind Latilla. <laughs> yep. Making her way on. It kind of wiggles a little bit and makes itself <laughs> squat a little bit. It seems to be <laughs> sucking up some of the moisture from the moss. Ah. Aww. Oh, oh uh, Tibet is Thank stuck you. behind Phasos because she refuses to get any closer to it. <laughs> oh, sorry. Phasos is continuing to move. <laughs> also, at, at the mention of you saying that you were very good at being non-threatening, she made a mental note of the uh, distance between your shoulders and went, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although, was that the first time we heard, heard Phasos make a joke? Was he joking? I don't was think he? he was joking. That's he the thing. Was being entirely serious. Yeah, yeah no, that's oh, that's something that Phaedra would do. Then just gonna make a mistake and just gonna say, ah, she's taking mm -hmm. that as a joke. <sighs> All right, you so you guys head yeah. up there. You go up, and you enter what looks to be like a large kind of domey area, Ooh. and you can see Ooh. that there are several statues, kind of around a large statue in the center. Yeah, statues, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, statues. <laughs> I won't hide That's the weird. fact Those that you That's weird. Those statues have... got tokens on it. Yeah, whoa, crazy, right? I know. <laughs> they look like gargoyles. What the wow, hell? That's crazy. Moss. And you see a bunch of moss on the ground, and you can see that there is skylight coming from this area, kind of in the back. However, it seems to be blocked by some kind of arcane wall. Huh. So skylight, but it's on level with like the rest of the floor? Uh, yeah, so essentially it looks like an exit. Oh, okay, okay. Ah. Oh, this. Yeah. Uh, mm. Man, I love walking across the top of this rooftop. I really hope these gargoyles don't come to life. <laughs> I want to I wanna look at the statue. The statue? Okay. Uh, Phasos, you uh, said something first. Uh, you want to uh, investigate how? Yes, I would like to use my eye for detail uh, to just spot, uh, see if there's any sort of uh, clues about this room and mm. I use my investigation check to uncover or decipher clues go okay, ahead let me roll let me roll that investigation yeah nice. so it's very clear even to the untrained eye that these gargoyles are definitely constructs like golems that were made by somebody very familiar uh constructs that you have seen in your world as well however mm -hmm. the untrained eye wouldn't notice that the statue in the center is another one of these constructs oh god uh, Phasos kind of takes note of that. Be careful about the big statue. It's just a statue. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, no? Oh, okay. And looking into it, you do notice that this statue bears a striking resemblance to some, some kind or other of an ancient hero that is mostly lost to history carved into the likeness of maybe some guy that if you if you were given the name you wouldn't be able to nail who it is but gotcha. otherwise kind of like a lost to history kind of figure i guess if anybody's a history buff i mean i have the skill but <laughs> yeah uh Tibeth is far from history buff yeah um what, uh could i make a history roll just to kind of see yeah, if i might not? call this guy Whatcha? Ouch. Mm, someone lost to time. You can't quite Great. place the face. J cool. J J J J yeah. J <laughs> so yeah, kind of peering around the, the big statue toward the, the exit and then around at the two rooms, Honeymoon says, well, I'm going to make an educated guess and assume that we'll need to do something in those two side rooms to open the exit, so where shall we start? Um, Can we start on the side that doesn't put us on the moss? Yes, I was yeah, going to I say would... the, the left, left seems side. good. Seems left side seems fine. Apt. All right. So as you get over there, you can see the gargoyle's head like creaks and turns to look at you as you are moving and heading Ooh, that direction. Don't like that. I really do not appreciate the gargoyle stare. It otherwise doesn't 
seem to do anything else. But uh, this gives a little nod to it. <laughs> Honeymoon waggles her fingers at it, and you know her is behind the other two. Are all four of them looking at us, or just the one no, that's closest? Just, just the one that's closest was looking at you. They all are kind of oriented outwards from the statue, like pointing to each like respective wall. Mm-hmm. Uh, only when you were uh, like past kind of this area in its line of sight did it finally like turn its head at you. These are quite the security measures, don't you think? Yeah, let's just hope we don't trip them. You guys head into this room, and as you uh, kind of pass through the fog of war of your, you know, line of sight, you see that this room has a bunch of kind of copper-colored uh, stone tiles on the floor. Another yeah, one of those. Another one of those uh, glabagools, and yeah. another gargoyle, kind of standing in the corner, right over there. Hmm. Be- before we honeymoon enters the room, uh, I would like to please roll perception. You may. <laughs> or, or if, if anything, my 23 shows me anything. Mm-hmm. You may. Nice. Perception. You look around the room. You stare up and down. You can see that these tiles, you look at them. It seems that there is a very, very slight shadow, uh, like a crack underneath them. These are pressure plates. Good. Uh, uh-oh. Yeah. Honeymoon quickly relays. Nobody s- step on the tiles, the pressure plates. And looking around the room, there are some very, very subtly hidden, kind of behind the overgrowth and brush holes, p- uh, presumably to fire some kind of projectile out. No, mm-hmm. Do we Holy attempt God. to traverse here, or do we go over to the other side to see if maybe there's a well, clue for this? Uh... Huh. Uh. Can I invest, do an investigation to see if there's any clues to this? <laughs> <laughs> you may. Okay. Or yeah, if you could ask the fine fellow in the center there, I think he might be able to also give us a hint, maybe. Mm. He feels generous. Yeah. So uh, Actually, that's why Matilla was going to collect him some moss. <laughs> Collect oh. some moss. Okay, yeah. well, first, uh, Phaedrus' investigation. You look over these tiles, you you kneel down to look at them, kind of level them, and it's hard to tell if there's anything unique about them that might give you an advantage right now. Okay, yeah, Phaedrus is uh, going to sigh and uh, defer to the others for uh, their attempts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, while while Latilla is is scrounging up some moss, uh, Honeymoon will <laughs> cautiously call out an abyssal. Um, excuse me, um, fine fine friend. Um, is there any way you could perhaps help us get to that hallway over there? And she she points to the hallway that we want to get to. The Glabagool turns its eyes towards you, and it kind of looks over at the hallway, looks back at you, and it kind of shifts its body around, kind of like a Rubik's Cube, and shows that on the other side, there's a bunch of arrows sticking into it. Oh. Oh. Oh, oh. oh you're stuck here, too. Hmm. Do you like hmm. moss? It kind of, like, does the, the like, uh, Team Fortress 2 engineer neck, like, stretch. <laughs> oh. And oh, it... Dangerous. Its eyes get kind of get very close to as far as it can stretch itself. Is that a no? I'm toss it in, see what happens. Towards towards uh, you, like towards me. Yeah. Okay, because the engineer uh, says no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was gonna say it should be light enough that it wouldn't set off the pressure plates even if you miss. Yeah. Just do a gentle toss to the glabagool. Okay, you toss it, and it just like, poof, like you know, like you toss something into a syrup as it slowly droops in and kind of sizzles like an acid. And uh, you can see that with this, it's able to suck in the arrows that were in it and start to sizzle and digest those as well. Oh, Aww. God. Oh, nice. Good friend. Uh, man, out of... Uh- well- Conflict, just conflicted because out of character, Caitlin doesn't want to like use this thing as a meat shield, and, and Caitlin wants to rescue it. Honeymoon thinks, "Wow, what a good meat shield!" <laughs> oh. uh, Phasos hmm. is going to word this actually as he had similar thoughts. <laughs> um, hmm. If it heals from the moss, then perhaps we could use that to our advantage. Continue to feed it as it finds its way through the maze. Hmm. Honeymoon kind of taps her chin thoughtfully. You may have a point, Mr. Jerain. He 
cracks a very sly smile for a moment before immediately going back to <laughs> a, a grimace at hearing Langley's voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She praised me, but she also spoke. <laughs> <laughs> Tibeth is gonna also gonna go back and scrounge up some moss, and she's going to do so while staring this gargoyle dead in the eye to make sure that it's okay. It does not seem to take notice of you, and has not turned its head yet. Okay, she scraps up some moss, <laughs> and she yeah, like comes well, back and hands some around. It's like, all right, well, uh, if it's hungry, then we can just feed it as we go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, very mm. well. Uh, would, we would, should uh, ask. Yes, would someone please relay our request, as it were? Um, I mean, I'll do it. Honeymoon turns her attention to the, the, the fucking gabagool, whatever the fuck. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and in the abyssal, she says, um, Excuse me, so um, would you be quite all right if we... She, she pauses, trying to think of a diplomatic way to word this. Since you are of such an impressive size... Um, would you mind terribly if, you know, if all of us crossed the room and we kept you a nice supply of moss so that you could continue to regenerate? Um, would you mind terribly if we sort of traveled in your shadow? At the, when you say the word for moss in abyssal, like its eyes almost bulge out of the, uh, (gasps) the... Oh my god. The the slimy, (laughs) slimy frame that it has. (laughs) Well, I, I think it's safe to say that this this creature is really keen on getting its next moss fix, so I think we're good to go. Very okay. good. Well, um, first we have to determine which way the arrows are going to be flying out of once we take our first step. Because intuitively, you would think it would be coming down this hallway when we step on those plates, but it could also be coming from either the north or south of the room. Yeah. Presumably the Grabble Ghoul is coming to us. Would we would come be able this... to see it. Could it come this way? It seems pretty dead set on staying on those four plates there. Ah, uh, I thought it was going to slop over. <laughs> I thought we were um, all going to slop this way and we were just going to stay behind it. Like, head this way. Mm-hmm. We could just toss things on the different plates. Well, yes. But do we have well, anything heavy I'm... enough to mm-hmm. to trigger those plates? It's my concern. Because we have moss, um, but that's not really that 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 heavy. Yeah, Honeymoon leans Check around the wall uh, and says in Bissell to the gargoyle in the corner, Excuse me, would you mind lending us a hand? No response from the gargoyle. Well, with a shot. <laughs> Who's got what <clears throat> in your pockets? Yeah, yeah let me... Let me try something, and Tibeth is going to try to squeeze past Honeymoon and Phasos, sure. and she's going to get on the ground, like prone, and she's going to press her hand onto the plate. You press your hand on the plate, and that one, specifically, darts fly out from this wall into the Glabagool. <laughs> oh. It tosses some oh, moss. I am so sorry about that. Here, have some moss, and she tosses some moss. <laughs> okay, where do you toss it? I try to toss it forward, like on, forward onto okay. him. Onto him, okay. Yeah, you toss it and it sucks it in again. Like it seemed like it lost a little bit of its mass, kind of into a a more thinned liquid at the bottom. But as you toss the moss in, the thin liquid gets sucked back up, and so do the arrows. I'm just okay. gonna go keep collecting moss. <laughs> yep, seems wise. Um, well, hang on. Maybe there is a trick to this. Um. More so than just using our poor friend here as a jelly shield. I mean, I don't think um, it minds, really. I mean, it's just a bed. <laughs> Honestly, it well. should be happy to have work. Uh, it's just <laughs> to Beth just stone cold <laughs> turns <laughs> to him. Listen, I don't, I don't do alignment. No, not I don't do alignment, but just for that sentence alone, I'm going to say that Phasos is evil. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, Honeymoon raises her eyebrows because she doesn't. She's not the same flavor of evil as Jerem, but she's like. Eh. Uh, to Beth, having been aboard uh, a pirate vessel essentially as an indentured servant slash slave for a very long time, uh, being happy to have work, quote unquote, uh, Ooh. gives Phasos the worst look she can muster piercing daggers with her eyes and she goes perhaps 
You should try stepping on the next plate, then. You so desperately need some work, don't you? I'm uh, happily employed, actually. Really? Yeah. Right now? Yeah. On a deserted yeah, honey island? <laughs> Honeymoon leans over and, like, puts a hand on Tibet's shoulder and says, Oh, if he wasn't a cartographer, I wouldn't have a rival. <laughs> and actually, I think I have an idea to, um, to maybe speed run this a little bit. Mm. Um... So, are we able to gauge about how much weight a plate can take before it activates? Yes, I would say with enough testing, you can uh, tell that a piece of moss would not put the plate down. Um, maybe something like uh, a shoe would, like a boot, is enough weight to push down the uh, the pressure plate, like a, a boot on its own. Okay, maybe, I would maybe like not to a sandal. Uh, I would like to wild shape into a tiny lizard. <laughs> Hey. Wow, all right, yeah. <laughs> that Incredible. will give you a light enough weight that you're able to traverse the pressure plates without much trouble of press pressing them down. I, so yeah, I forgot moved. that you're a druid. <laughs> yeah. so I keep thinking you, you're like a sorcerer. Nope, so uh, you guys watch as Honeymoon says, oh, oh, no, hold on, I can fix this. And you watch as her form just, whoop, just shrinks down into a little purple and gold lizard, and she starts oh. just oh. scuttling oh, across. Hmm. So much more fitting. All right, show me the route that you take. Uh, okay. I went, well, first, when Phaedra said she she sticks her little <laughs> lizard tongue out at him, uh, and then so she is just going diagonally. So you're you're going diagonally. So as you yeah. go diagonally, the the uh, Glabagool notices this small creature and tr starts to like hunt oh, you. No. <laughs> and as oh it, no! Inabisa, please stop! Yeah. <laughs> as it goes to follow this small, skittering little Mouse. creature, it no, no, no. lands on a few more pressure plates and does not take notice of the various arrows being darted into it. Pew, 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 as it's trying to follow. Yeah, guys, you. hurry up! Wait, okay. wait. Which way does uh? I, I keep does going. The arrows so come. the arrows come from this wall. Because he was right here on these four. Yeah. Okay. You can okay. only you come can from follow wall. through. Okay. Yes. So, yeah, okay. Bezos is going to just kind of casually step onto pressure plates now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dave, don't, as he's walking by, toss his piece of moss, uh, like, on the ground next to the guy as he's okay. moving towards yep. the lizard, and then, you know, kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll assume yeah. that you guys traverse with it and, like, squeeze past it in the... Excuse, the excuse me, pardon me! <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it makes it here. Let me give you guys some room here. And it follows lizard... Honeymoon uh, is screaming for fucking life. <laughs> I don't know if I need to go back across the room and I don't want to waste another wild shape. And it follows and follows and follows. And is there I'm any point like where you stop being a lizard? Um, not yet. Wait not to yet? see where we get. So you're going to try and block it, yeah? I, moss, just like right next to its eye oh. to try and... <laughs> moss right like next to it? Back and, well, it? Yeah, like back and forth in its face. In its face? Well, you wave it back and forth in, in its face, but it just like pushes against you almost like you're not even there and st your arm starts to get sucked into the Whoa. the goo like a syrup yeah okay it doesn't provide gonna... much resistance i'm gonna back it's like a, honey... like a gelatin <laughs> honey is just bulleting forward she is trying to speed run the rest of this map <laughs> yep okay so you speed run it's not very fast so you you are able to manage to go in the next room you see more moss and more gargoyles, and two arcane doors of a different, or er, arcane walls of a different color from the one that you saw earlier. Mm. Okay, we're not gonna be able to reason with this guy anymore. Yeah, okay. Keep keep um, pulling him into the room so we can actually get out though first. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much moss here. <laughs> yeah, Honeymoon is just- he, He'll be so happy. <laughs> just skitty dittering across. Yep, and it, it comes out and it notices the moss, and it almost shoots its eyeballs out of its gelatinous <laughs> frame. A wooka, man. And goes and kind of does like a like a spread of itself, like it spreads itself wider but shorter Fuck. and starts sucking up a bunch of moss. Absolutely. Honey, lost honey in moon, the sauce. Liz, lizard moon like scurries back when she sees it get big and just like skitters up uh, to best pant leg. <laughs> <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Okay. Um bed. It's probably also not a safe place for you. Yeah, Honeymoon, when she starts to roast, skitters back out, sees that the cube is no longer hunting her, and she'll 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 de transform and turn back into Honeymoon. She's she goes, oh my 
God, I didn't think it would start chasing me. Oh, okay. Faisa says, wait, that wasn't your plan? <laughs> <sighs> you may be too prideful, but I can admit when things go awry. Hmm. Well, I got us across the room, didn't I? And she <laughs> starts looking around. <laughs> uh, the question will be how to get back over. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll burn that bridge when we get to it. And she's, uh, Tabeth is going to go closer to this gargoyle. Uh, okay. Not close enough within melee range of it, but just yep. like eyeing it from a safe distance. So each of these gargoyles, you notice that their line of sight seems to be like towards their respective uh, walls. So like this one, I don't know if, can you see this arrow? Yes. Yes. It's looking like that way. This one's looking this way and this one's looking this way. Mm, okay. And as you uh, kind of ac go across it to Beth, it's eyes and face lock onto you and you can see like some of the kind of stony chips, uh, stony pieces of its neck kind of chip off as it turns. Get out of sight. Oh, okay. Yeah, it honey immediately grabs gets off to the side. He does not like being looked at or at least looking at us. I don't think I'm that hideous, but you know, maybe to a gargoyle. Which way was the other one looking? Uh, to the uh, right. He's, he's drawn it. Right. I suppose we had best get moving. We can try to skirt around them, but once we get to the far side, I'm not quite sure how we're supposed to get past that barrier. I was hoping that these fine fellows here would give us some kind of inkling of what to do, but... Uh... While you guys are talking, um, since it's a, a stony kind of cavern sort of thing, it echoes throughout, and you hear a voice in common, and you hear the voice calling out, Hello? Is anyone there? I'm in a bit of a need of assistance. Uh, hello? Um, and it seems hello? to be coming towards the south part of the room. Honeymoon's starting to, like, you know, yeah. snake game her way around. Yeah, so you snake game your way around. Our way around. You snake game your Careful way around. Careful not to, and, to uh, touch, touch the jello. <laughs> not to touch the jello, not to touch the, uh, the gargoyles. And the presumably the gargoyle is not angry at the slime. It doesn't seem to make any notice of the slime. And as you go there, you can see that these walls, just like the other one, are transparent. And you will see... What the fuck is that? So, is that Ettercap with you the top see, hat? You see a very familiar creature that you've seen from your world, an Ettercap. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, my. Uh, fine, sir. Are you all right in there? Oh, yes, finally, someone who can understand and have intelligent conversation. Uh, perhaps you can assist me in my current conundrum. Uh, uh, is the conundrum that you are trapped in that room? I knew you had an eye for details, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's um, one of my skills. Uh, good, good sir, uh, or um, is, is that all right to call you? Oh, anything is fine by me, madam. Wonderful. Um, what, what could we call you? Um, ah! The Edder Cap takes its long, lanky arms and takes off its top hat to do a little courteous bow. Mr. Nice. Cap, please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I am That's Clyde Hemsworth Bartholomew the Seventh at your service, and I'm in desperate need to return back to my nest so that I may return to shepherd my spiders. <laughs> that, that was Caitlin, not Honeymoon, by the way. <laughs> Ah. Um, How did you end up in here? Oh, well, you know, I was traversing the surface world in, in the brisk early morning, as I often do, in order to hunt for food for my spiders, and lo and behold, I found this lofty building. Knowing that you humanoids like to hoard food inside of buildings, I took a trek inside and sap! I appear to have been stepped into a magical trap of some sort. You just walked right into here? Yes. Pass the door with the punching. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, it's very, very polite, that door. Um, yes, we yes. found that out. So, have you any idea how we might be able to get you out? No, perhaps. I have been studying these things for a little bit. I'm not the most proficient at magics, but this wall seems to be made of some sort of arcanery and can only be dispelled with magic of equal makeup and potency. Uh, what is it that you humanoids call it? Uh, a key! Like that one, over there! And you can see behind him that there is a floating kind of arcane key that looks green in color. You can also see that Beside him, there is another room full Wait, of Bezos chests and yeah, we, yeah. treasure <laughs> and gold. Yeah, Ooh. Tibeth is uh, Tibeth is like watching the others kind of trail off to the other side, and she's like, "Well, you see, that key appears to be of a greenish hue. It 
you probably need something more orangey to be able to get you out. Uh, Give and me one for Tibet. fruit. Uh, Good. Maybe. And <laughs> she's fine. going to put her hand against the glass to see if that does anything since she is of a similar hue. <laughs> <laughs> you put your hand against the arcane wall and it kind of stings you a little bit. It zaps. Oh. Oh. Well, it can't be anything of just any color, so I assume we'll have to find the specific key for you. No, oh, hmm. I, I did want to uh, ask you, how did you find your way in here? Oh, you know, we... Oh, sorry, real quick, real quick, before Phasus moves away, um, I've, 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 I, just, I just wanted, like, as we're both standing here looking at this room of treasure, can we both just kind of look at each other and just have a little sly grin of acknowledgement? <laughs> like, two evil bitches being like, this yes. is where we're at. Okay. All right. you know, m- mutual goal here. All right, yeah, sorry, that's it. Um, So, we, we happened to cross the door like you did. Um, and we, we, we made our way around the gelatinous cubes and past the arrows. How did you get past the arrows? Oh, well, uh, um, I obviously just climbed around. Oh, that's right. Oh you can just God. be on the, on the ceiling. Of course, yeah. these lanky oh. legs, they, they do a lot of good in helping me traverse all these, although I'm not as spry as I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, yeah, so that's more or less the, sh- the long short of it, of how we got in here. We we had to use the assistance of a, the, our friendly cube back there. Ah, well, to I can help have the, the greatest room. of confidence that you are the most competent person that I've encountered while in this scenario so far. <laughs> how many others have you encountered? None. I've been here for, st- oh, let's see. Um, hmm. Just like marks on the walls as <laughs> keeping track. <laughs> He just takes one claw and kind of scratches his mandibles. Might be, might be a, a few days now. And uh, out of curiosity, uh, have you been on this island long? Oh yes, my entire life. And ah. I've been lucky enough to not be caught in such a situation such as this before. But I'm it seems my sure. luck has run out. Well, we'll be happy to spring you free from your predicament. Uh, as soon as we find the orange key, of course. Ah, thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you, thank you so much. The sooner I, I can get back to my it. spiders, the sooner I can lead them to their next meal. Yo, know, I do when hope you... that they're doing all right. Yeah, yeah uh, Tibet uh... nervously looks at the rest of the party, hoping that we're not going to end up as his next meal for his spiders. <laughs> well, Honeyman kind of leans around to Beth and, and quickly says, um, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, you know, once we've gotten you out of here, um, we're actually not native to this plane, so if you could maybe tell us a little bit more about it, that would be so helpful. Oh, you're outlanders! You hail from the inner seas! Ah, oh, the world beyond our own. Ah, oh, yes, of course, there's plenty of history about this island that I'd be happy to share. Just like I've shared Perfect. with others of your kind before. Before? <laughs> yes! So you're... you've encountered others before us, but not while you've been in prison. Not in here, no. I, I believe I've only been in here for a couple of days, and my st- stomach is starting to rumble, unfortunately. Uh. But you are a very gentle sort, and have brought us so many riches, like those materialistic things in the room beside me. I didn't t- c- take much care in it, as I have no need, which is why I came into this room. But um, perhaps it might have been a good bargaining chip. Materialistic, you say, and and Tibet's eyes start to drift over to the other door. <laughs> Tibet, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. We're we're here obviously to help our new friend. Yes, oh, yes, yeah. yes, we are. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. well, I believe our solution lies on the other side of the statue room, so we no, should probably start you. making our way back over there and I... figure out the arrow trap somehow. Uh, we I should have been leaving stuff like, on the tiles. How did the orange the stuff appear? Did he just walk in and it was there? Yes, like, according was to his him? story, he walked in and it appeared as he entered the room. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I missed that okay. somewhere. All good. I would like to ask him a question, though. Go ahead. When you climbed over, did you notice a pattern on the floor by any chance? Mm, not that the... I could notice. Uh, it all seemed very peculiarly similar. Whoever made that trap did a very good job of making them very uniform. Uh, props to the architect of this building. Thank you. Good job, Shut Joseph. Up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the the person who designed this building is very handsome and, and smart <laughs> and has a beautiful singing voice. 
All true, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes. We're going to make our way back. We'll we'll get back to you. Of course. Uh, take all the time you <laughs> we'll need. Put a pen I, in that. I think I can last a, a couple of more days. And air to cap uh, has a very, very good uh, nature of hibernating. I, I think. Honey, when calls back, if we're in here for days, we have bigger problems. Um, Bezos is going. Oh, you go ahead. I was going to say as uh, we're trailing out to Beth is the last to leave, and she's trying to like shimmy by the line of sight here of the gargoyle to peer into this room mm -hmm. and she takes note of the bountiful treasure inside <laughs> and her eyes start to sparkle a little okay. she walks away so as you guys enter that room you can see that actually the glab uh glabagool has left behind somewhat of a trail because of the fact <laughs> that some of these tiles are not pressure plates Oh. The ones that were pressure plates, the the kind of slimy goop kind of sunk into their cracks. However, you will notice that this one are <laughs> all kind of like the the mucusy viscous fluid is still there kind of sitting that has not fallen into the cracks of it. So no okay. rolls needed. It's just a way to show that you do have a path okay. back and forth now. Congratulations. Ah, oh, awesome. Nice. Great. So, Beautiful. Uh, so we... Because you beat the puzzle, and I'm not going to make you do it again. <laughs> Good. Bezos is going to take his long stride and, and hop and get there. Just start hopping. Okay. Honeymoon is yep. going to totter over in her high heels. <laughs> How do it's I make very this peculiar jump? that there's that one plate back there that... Uh... <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, to Beth, halfway across, realizes something and looks back at Latilla. Latilla yeah. just looks very determined and just says, okay, we're doing do you, this. Do you, do you spring, spring like tigger? I was about to say, do you spring <laughs> over or? There's no jumping. <laughs> She's thing. just going to have to tank it. Oh, no. Well, seeing as I'm giving you like the function of movement of braces with legs, I'm going to say functionally jumping works the same for you as the other <laughs> Races as you well. You have to do the worm. <laughs> so it's increasingly embarrassing every time you do it, but it's, it's the same effect. Handstand. Yeah. <laughs> she she does do a weird handstand. It all just like t topples over her. Yeah, for those, for those just joining us, Lotilla Lotilla is a Yuan tea that we have homebrewed that has a snake body rather than uh, humanoid Zombie. legs. You can make it to the other side very easily as you traverse and pass the line of sight of the gargoyles. Once again, they crack their kind of head to quickly look at you as you pass them by. Don't like that. Don't like that one bit. But Please. they don't look like they're breaking out. No, not not so far. Whoops. That's not like not the other the, ones. Not the grab button. And uh, so you go into that room and you can see that it seems to have uh, a floating arcane key in the middle of what right looks color. to be a pool of water. And you can mm. see that there are two uh, arcane doors, or walls, rather, of a magenta hue over here, down mm. matching the same color as the key. Does it seem uh, like acid? Distance. Uh, it doesn't look like acid. It looks like very murky, cloudy water. Okay. Even if it was normal it. water, I wouldn't want to touch it. Phazos can use his tentac his uh, his not tentacles, but his inky tendrils, because it's fifteen feet of. Uh... And as you do, um, you see a tendril come out of the water, oh, kind of lash out, and I'm gonna need you guys to roll initiative, oh, just so we oh, just so we can keep track. You saw something something in the water. It was right here in the water. Uh -oh. Something green and slimy. Okay, first off is Lotilla. You see, so, Phasos, you do have hold of the key. I will say it will be a bonus action to pull it in because of your inter the interruption that you got from the uh, the creepy thing in the water. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, Lotilla, you're up first. What do you do? I, I still have moss. <laughs> I toss it over here to make a splash. Moss, 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 moss. Moss, moss, moss. You toss it over there. Okay, there's going to be a splash and a ripple, and we will we will wait until the uh, the enemy turn to see what if they react to that or not. Something slimy and green, green and slimy turn. Anything else you want to do? I'll say that's a bonus action. Okay, I I can't hit anything. I don't particularly know how to help Phasos at this time, so I think that's I think I'll just move further into this corner and end my turn there. Okay. To Beth. 
Tabeth is going to prepare an action to shoot her pistol at the creature the next time it rears its head. Uh, okay. Because that's all she can do. She cannot touch that water. Okay, dokie. <laughs> that's true. So you pre- you use your action to prepare a reaction to shoot at anything that comes out of the water. Yep. Bezos. Okay, I'm gonna use my bonus action to slip the uh, the key to me. Yep. You slurp the key to you. You no- now have the magenta key. Yay. Cue doom music. And yeah, I'm just gonna just kind of ignore the fact that there was a slimy gaming thing and just make my way to the door. I'm gonna just be ready to, to open that door. I'm assuming that opening the door with the key would have also been a bonus action. You can use a full action if you so okay. wish. Yeah. Yep. Sure. I'm going to uh, touch the key to the wall. You touch the key to the wall. So uh, the key kind of like forms an orb and it's consumed into the wall and it kind of almost shatters like a pane of glass and the arcane pieces dissipate into the ether. Okay. Well, there we go. That's my turn. Now it's the something slimy's turn. Oh no! And the Stay something slimy. Slime first, the first one comes up. The first is, one? Uh, next to Honeymoon. No, put it back. <laughs> and it's going to lash at you with a tendril. Bang. But Tibet, yeah. Yes, Tibet, you bang, fire. 12 is not enough. It is, it has a scrawny frame, and it is going to. You you just miss. My, my AC oh. sucks. So. Your AC, I'm sorry. Your, sorry, Honeymoon. Your AC sucks, and it is going to whack you with ah. one of its things for six slashing damage, and I'm oh, going to need you to make a strength saving throw. I'm not good at those, Joseph. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Fuck off. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, it, it tries to wrap around you, and you can feel that it's trying to pull you into the water. However, you are okay. able to kind of break out of its grapple. And the second one is going to pop up as well boop, and swim on over to Phazos to try and do the same thing. It's going to lash out. Okay. Phew. Ooh, believe it or not, it hits you. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so you take, you also take six damage, and I'm going to need you to make this strength saving throw. Okay. Oh, he's hopefully better at those. Yeah. God! Oh, no! You are pulled into Uh-oh. the water. Oh, no. uh, right after you like put the key in, you just feel this thing wrap around your neck and f- pull you into the water, and you are now suffocating. Uh-oh. Uh oh. So oh, Beth geez. at first just goes, "Oh no!" and then she like remembers for a brief second what happened in the other room. She's going, "Oh no!" <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, since you are suffocating, uh, what is your constitution modifier? My constitution modifier is plus three. Three, okay. In three turns, if you do not get air, you will fall to zero hit points. Ah. Okay. So this is, this is turn one. Honeymoon, your turn. Uh, okay. She's freaking out a little bit. She just got slime attacked and barely avoided getting dragged into this gross ass water. Um, so she's, she's kind of frantically looking between the two guys at Latilla, at Phazos, now underwater. And she thinks, yeah, like I'm supposed to hate him, but also he's like the like one of the muscles. All right, Honeymoon is going to take the disengage action. Uh, she's getting far away from the fucking water. <laughs> um, can I can I make one of those martial checks, perhaps? Yes, you may. Uh, so I think a perception check. Oh, gorgeous. So you're pretty good at those. Oh, well, I might just botch again. No, I didn't. All right, so. These things are also something somewhat familiar to um, your world, uh, which these are called chokers. They are very chokers. agile. However, they are not very hardy. Just a f- uh, one good, one or two good hits on them will incapacitate them very easily. But they are very agile and somewhat hard to hit. They also have a slight range, as you saw with both yourself and Phazos. They mostly try to use their environment to secure their kills rather than their own, because on on their own they are not very strong. Yeah, um, Honeymoon will will yell out to, well, I'm, Faces can't fucking hear, he's underwater, but she'll <laughs> yell to Lotilla and to Beth, um, they're fast and slippery, but they should go down in a few good hits. It has no, nothing she can do this turn, so. She wanted to be in range of not getting hit. Makes mm-hmm. sense. So yeah, I think that's me. Lotilla. I'm gonna move over this way. 
You don't want to hop in the gross, disgusting, stagnant <laughs> water? Not currently, no. If I have to get Fezos out, fine. I'm gonna throw a trident at him. Okay, show me the hits. trident. Ooh, Seven that's two. enough. Let me see the damage. Okay. Can I just click? I can. Yes. All right. It's so just one hand. you throw it and pew, and it just like goes in and let's see. Yeah, it bre uh, it breaks the um kind of focus on Phazos, so it lets go of Phazos. You are no longer being held, um, so you won't have to make another uh, saving throw to try and get out of it, but you are still suffocating, but it has let go of Phazos. Okay, I'm, I'm suffocating because I'm still underwater. Yes, you are still underwater. And uh, so this one, just with that one hit, you can see this thing is like nearly dead. Nice. That's funny. Anything else? Oh, I can, I can throw another. Yeah, oh, get his sick. ass. Actually, how I think many I'm just gonna... How many tridents do you have? I have two. I'm going to need to fish that out. <laughs> so oh, okay. this round, I'm just going to throw a dagger and hope for the best. Oh, good okay. No, I mean, we found a bunch. Are you proficient? Yeah, uh, yeah you're, a, proficient you're a fighter, daggers. aren't you? Yeah, you're proficient yeah. with everything. Unfortunately, a 16 is not enough. Ooh, okay. rough. Wow. That's a honeymoon, Ooh. you see one fly by you. <laughs> yeah, honeymoon's like, oh, ugh. That's my turn. All right, Tibet, your turn. To, uh, upon... Lotilla making the first hit on that guy. She's going to breathe a small a small sigh of relief. Thank God I don't have to save Phasos. Okay. Uh, <laughs> she's going to take a shot at this one. Okie dokie. Uh, how many musket balls did I have again? You From, you used one, you so you have five? four left. Yeah. Okay, I have four left. Okay, just making sure. I want to keep I want to keep track of that. All good. Um, so I'll make an attack on that boy. No, oh. Not enough. Ouch. Another shot, and she goes, you know, I've never really used one of these things. <laughs> she's she's dual-handing it? She, you, you, you've got a pistol in both hands? Yeah, pretty much. Good. <laughs> um, and uh, that's all she can do. <laughs> all right. Phasos, you are under the water. I would say you need about 10 feet of move. Uh, yeah, 10 feet of movement to reach, get up to the surface. Okay, I'm going to get up to the surface and also go to the, the guy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I'm going to attempt a uh, one of my big old punches. Okay, give uh, me <laughs> give me a punch. Let's, let's see. What a Chad. Oh. Unfortunate. Ooh, However, no. I am going to action surge. Action <laughs> surge. Let's so see I'm it. Try again. Let's go. Uh, there we go. Get it, oh. And as I have hit him, I now can uh, uh, immediately am able to grapple him because uh -huh. of my uh, tavern brawler. So when I hit with an unarmed stri strike, I can use a bonus action to attempt to grapple the target. Well, let's see the damage. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I don't damage. know if he's going to live long it. enough to be grappled. You're right, you're right. I might kill it, but I do want to do it to where I'm <laughs> basically grabbing this thing by the neck. Um, Good. While I Just want to fucking... It lift him uh, out of the water. So I'll show you strangling. So what you do, Oops. you do, you do, you pull a Thanos Infinity War Loki, where you just <laughs> grab it by the neck and just with your thumb, just. <laughs> oh, <Okay>. oh God. <laughs> uh, he, uh, he, you know, he, he lets go and Wait. it's just like. Strangle Please grab me. the trident. <laughs> yeah, I grab the trident. All right, yeah. <laughs> I... So I'll say you can pick up the tridents with a bonus action. Okay. Yay. Good. Yeah. All right, that's my turn. Okay, and seeing this, that it's now outnumbered, this one is going to dive back into the water All right. and okay. retreat. That? Cool. Great. Combat's over. Sick. Good. Just gotta right. watch it whenever we come back through. Phasos climbs back up, <laughs> wicks, wicks some water off his suit, and holds the trident out for uh, Lotilla. Thank you. And thank you. Uh, Tabeth is going to like gently like look over in the water to see if she can see her musket balls that she missed. <laughs> Those are probably oh. lost, aren't they? Oh, yeah. How deep is the water? Not one to find out. And she's just gonna keep on going. Yeah. <laughs> Honeymoon does uh, before he before just before phases can stop her, just like dust off his shoulder and Druid craft some of the water off to piss him off. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he, he for a second he goes that. Uh, <laughs> Langley. Honey, honey even laughs out loud at that. <laughs> All right. As you go into this room, boop. hey, look, more. Oh, water. no! 
Right. Oh, this is the worst thing that could happen. <laughs> oh, my God. And you can see across on the other side of the room, there is an orange key. Mm. Sure is. Wait, there are oh. also two goggles over there. <sighs> um, the most certainly may are. I, may I roll perception as I inspect the water, see if I fucking see anything? Yes. I would like to. And there's it, more of those little See heads. if you have, I'll take your passive perception if this is lower. Um, to Fire. see if you can get like a 30. Okay, with your passive perception of 20, what, 20 whatever the fuck, um, yeah. <laughs> you can see that there are subtle ripples in the water, and I'll let you know, here, I'll draw it out, that there it is here and here. So everywhere. Yeah, Honeymoon uh, gets everyone's attention, but specifically La Tilla, since she's kind of the team swimmer, um, and she points at all the spots and says, I can see some movement over there. We're not alone again. Okay. She just like anchors herself and like puts partially her body in the water so she can look under. Mm, you look under and it's very, very difficult to see. It's not dark like darkness dark, it's dark like muddy dark. Um, murky. It's hard, yeah, murky. There's a Down lot in of the particles bayou. in the water that are blocking your vision. It's like water fog. Gotcha. Yeah. She comes back up. It's too murky to see. It's Nintendo 64 water when you're underwater. Yeah, to cut down on the draw distance. Yeah. To Beth, noticing that there's more gargoyles, uh, is going to get in line of sight of this one, if it's looking this way. Yeah, you can, can see, see that both of present? these are kind of looking in diagonal directions, kind of like this. Oh, okay. That is the cross-section of their vision. Well, um... Lotilla, whenever you do happen to make your way across, just that point about there, and she points very, like, indirectly almost. It's just like, over there, you know, about 10, 15 feet out from the other side, um, just dip under the water a bit so you avoid the gargoyles. Oh, you think I'm going to be above the water? Well, I don't know how you swim. <laughs> Uh, right. I would like to, as lots if as Lato is kind of preparing to hop in, uh, I would like to just kind of lay a hand on her shoulder and say, uh, "In case you need it," and I, I will go ahead and cast guidance on her. Okay. It leaves a little shimmer on your shoulder. Okay. You know what? I think I will. Like, she'll hop in, but she'll stay above just in case she gets grabbed. They're mm -hmm, aware. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because so if you go see... under and you just stay under, we won't know. You just yeah. Think, oh. So you keep oh, yeah, in mind the places where Honeymoon pointed out where the chokers might be. Yes, I Yep. I would like to just be like, I can make it here and then I will. Yes. Like go around here. I will and duck under. Yeah. Alright. So you go about there. And as you make it oh. to Yep, keep going. Oh. Sorry. As you make it to that spot, okay. you feel something lash out at you. Oh. Okay. And we're gonna we're gonna keep the initiative for uh -oh. simplicity's okay. sake, because I don't want to make you guys roll again. First up <laughs> is you, Blotilla. You feel something lash out at you. Let's see if it hits you. It does not. It should. But you you do kind of feel the ripple in the water, like the wave of the force kind of hits you, as you can see this thing's trying to attack you. No. Mm. I would like to grapple it with my tail. With your tail? Okay. Uh, oh, no, reverse. Yeah, that's right. We homebrewed you that uh, grapple feature. You mind putting it in the chat once again so I can be reminded did, of what it does? You, yeah, guidance your, will it, be relevant. Yeah, so your grapple has range. So it's it's basically saying when you grapple, because grapple itself is a, is a thing. So when you yeah. grapple. So your grapple has range plus damage compared to normal grapple. Yeah, 10 feet. So you can grapple from a range with your tail. So uh, yeah, you can make me an athletics check to try and grab this choker, and it's going to try and slip out. Yeah, and you can add a D4 to it. Hee hee hee. That D4 nice. saved you. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so you grab onto this thing that you feel that you can't see it, but you feel something wriggling and trying to get out from your tail. You have it. And oh, uh, now, so <laughs> your damage is your unarmed strike. And what is your strength for? It's, I have this as an attack. I, <laughs> it's a D8 plus four. Uh, oh, because you have unarmed I took Tasha. attack. Okay, okay, yeah. cool, yes. Then, uh, yeah, show me the unarmed strike as you constrict this thing like the snake you are. Fucking God. Squeezing. Yep, you are squeezing Snap it like a, like a rubber Can chicken. Can I do that twice since it's she's got two attacks? Um, Does that count? 
It's an unarmed attack. Yes, make me I uh you have it grappled, so just give me another unarmed strike. All right, you squeeze it and you feel you just and you feel its limp body it's just like Oh god. And you s- <laughs> as as you let go, you guys can see the choker body rise to the surface. It's dead. And then so does Latilla. Yeah. Honeyman's like, "Oh, she's effective." Yeah. She's good. That's what I was trying to do. This way. <laughs> And then she's gonna duck under to avoid the gaze. Okay. And come back up. Okay. Okay. Wait. 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 Let's see how much <laughs> move. How oh. much movement that was. You started. Oh, sorry. We're still doing That's okay. turns. Okay. There's uh here. Yeah. You have just enough movement. Okay. Just making sure. Okay. You have just enough movement to make it up there. Slide up. And that's where she'll end if we're still in combat and they're all rushing me. Mm, <laughs> yeah. That's where uh, you. End. That's where okay, I end. Tibet. Anyway. Your turn. Tibet is like, gonna do. Yeah, I, she looks around. Um, <laughs> can she notice any of the ripples moving? Like, um, converging? As pointed out by Honeymoon, that is where you were told they are. Um, I would say another check from Honeymoon would be needed to see if they have moved at all. Alright. Okay. Well, as can? before, she's just gonna prepare an action. The first little shit that <laughs> pops out of the water. <laughs> Get a nice little musket ball for breakfast. No good yeah. Bezos. Uh, yeah, Bezos is going to um, also prepare Why don't you an splash around or uh, something? <laughs> Try to draw their attention. <laughs> it's actually not a bad idea. Um, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna splash the water with his hand to see if he can uh, you know stir up some sort of a uh, reaction. You splash the water with your hand. Give me a performance check. Oh, great. Uh, really, really sell that you're a dead fish. Oh! Or a dying fish. Oh. <laughs> you can see ripples in the water of where they are now. I'm just going to show them, like, so I don't have to keep drawing stuff. I'm going to show where they are. Boop, mm-hmm. This one here. And this one is over here. You can see that they were all kind of converging on Lotilla as she was swimming through. Oh. That could have really sucked. (laughs) Okay, so I... I'll say that's a bonus action. Great, bonus action for that. Um, Yeah, I'll I'll prepare my action for if uh, any of them get within, uh, you know, 15 feet of me, I'll whap them with my my ink. (laughs) Okay, next are the chokers. So, they are going to come on close to the edge and gonna throw a lot of attacks at Lotilla, uh, at least the ones that can make it there. He's wait, still is underwater, that one not right? drawn to Phasos? Um. Oh yeah, that was oh, what wait, that is what it was for. for. Okay, yeah, my, my, it wasn't my, just to see yes, the sparkles. Yes, you were right, you were right, not to just, okay, yes. You are right, it is drawn to Phasos. It's gonna come over here. This one is also going to be drawn to Phasos. I think it was like here, so it's gonna get like, yeah, they've got a lot of swimming speed. Thank you for reminding me of that. I totally forgot. I was like, oh, you, you, you can, can see I was just like, ha. wait a minute. No, you're right. Thank you for, for letting me know. <laughs> now, did they pop out when they came towards me? They do not, but you can okay. see where they are based on their tendrils that slash out from the water. So, Good. first, Leela Attila. That's not, nope, that's, oh, that's. Mm, no, you're able to like dodge and weave and foo, 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 as like all three of these tendrils that try to lash out at you. You I can see it. them coming. Do any of does any of this uh, trigger my reaction to yes, shoot? Yes, I will say since all three of them are kind of attacking simultaneously, you can pick and choose which one you want to fire at. I'll go for the the one that's right here in the middle. Okay, it's the shortest distance. Okay, okay. Uh, take a shot. Yeah, she's take take a shot. <laughs> Quick, come oh on! My gosh. Oh. oh, please don't hit me. You pew, just like pew, into the water. Can't quite tell if you confirm the hit or not. I'm pretty sure that hit him, right? <laughs> and she um, looks over at Honeymoon. <laughs> Honeymoon is is giving her a sympathetic look. That's not reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can do. Yeah. Does my reaction go off to the ones near me or no? Yes, you may use your okay. ranged tendril. Uh, so they're going to attack you. One of them misses, one of them hits. Um, I'm going to let you do your attack first, just in case if you potentially fail this strength save. Okay, so yeah, they, um, 
they have to actually make a strength saving throw. Oh. Um, for oh. my grasping tendril, I'll put that in there. Uh, I'm not saving the... from you. You're saving from me. <laughs> oh. Wow. It's like a. It's literally a counter grapple. Yes. Wow. Okay. All right. Uh, the one that misses you um, fails. You can roll your 3d6. Okay, let's do that. Uh, there we go. Okay, 14. well, it, it goes 15. to lash at you, and your tendril just, like, grabs it by its tendril and throws it up, and it just poof, splats on the ceiling and dies. Oh, God. Whoa! <laughs> Fantastic. Bezos looks pleased by this. Like, you, you oh, smell it like one of those, like, uh, those, like, funny, silly, sticky hands, you know? <laughs> <laughs> the rubber, the rubbery, sticky hands, and you just threw it, and it just splatted on the ce ceiling. There, there is true fear in, uh, <laughs> into Beth's eyes. Now, does this happen for every creature that's attacking you, or just one? Uh, it is. Uh, well, I can only do it to one creature at a time. So. Okay. Okay. So the other one, it does hit you. It rolled high enough to hit you. So you only take three slashing damage, but you're going to need to make a strength save as it's going to try and pull you to the briny deep. Yeah. yeah. All right. You're fine. It tries to pull you in, but you just like take one hand on its tendril and pull it away from your neck and just like <laughs> it slips out of your hand, but you can Cast feel it shaking side. a little bit. Good. Honeymoon. Honeymoon uh, wrinkles her nose at the last guy and is like, I don't want to be in range of that. She's going to back up over here, and then she is going to uh, produce flame at it. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Uh, okay, let's uh, see if we get him. Okay, so you don't get him, but yeah. uh, this is fire damage. You throw the fire, mm -hmm. and because this murky water is so nasty, it lights a flame. Oh, oh my god. Oh. What? <laughs> like an like an oil just like all Holy across fuck. the surface just, and you can see oh like some god. splashing in the water as all the chokers panic and flee from the surface and they deep dive in. <laughs> Honeymoon with with her hands still extended, eyes are wide, you know, the tips of her claws still sparking. But then uh, as she's watching the flames go across the whole fucking pool, uh, she 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 just smiles smugly and flips her hair and says, mm -hmm. "Very good." You wish you were me. <laughs> well, to Beth, jaw drops and she looks back at Honeymoon. She's, you mean I could have done that this whole time? I could have just <laughs> set the goddamn water on fire. <laughs> okay. Okay, fine. fine. Sure, that's fine. fine. Uh, no, she's sure. gonna start walking away up to this hallway. <laughs> she's kind of done with everything. I'm gonna set this on fire now. Okay. Yeah, Honeymoon calls across the, the burning water. Uh, Lotilla, everything all right on your end? Yeah, the the fire starts to slowly burn itself out as um, kind of it takes the oxygen away from its current area. But oxygen does come through the cracks in the ceiling. Like I said, that's lighting up the place. So the air is a little thin in here, but the the fire does eventually burn itself out. That's it. I going to hustle to the key yeah. and okay. then slink back under and try to get across pretty you quick. You grab the orange key. Zah, 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 zing. The pool is a bit warmer than it was before. Uh, yep, moving quickly. Mm -hmm. So, you guys now have the orange key, and I'm going to be transparent uh, with you. Uh, yeah, yeah, what's up, to Beth? I was, I was going to say, at, um, like, as the, the team is regrouping and, like, coming back down the hallway, they see to Beth with the uh, cast flame on her hand and just, like, <laughs> like jabbing it into the water to yeah. set it aflame. You jab it into the water, and just like the other one, it lights up like a bonfire, <laughs> like a blanket of flame. I am so incredibly distraught <laughs> well, because you didn't realize that the water was flammable yes okay the thick oily water well i just thought it was sludge yeah sludge is I, I mean i guess it could have been like oh you know the fire that i produce is magical in nature so maybe it won't get quenched so easily i could have thrown a fireball but no i was sitting there shooting a pistol that i've never used in my entire life well <laughs> you used it on the ship that was the first time 
<laughs> All right. You guys can go ahead and put yourselves back in the room. Yeah. Now, okay. I'm going to be I'm going to be totally transparent so that you guys know what your choices are here. Oh, Whichever no. door you choose to open will not oh, open okay, the no. other one. Oh, yeah, oh I was, you I was thinking the, I was like uh, uh, it sucks to suck. Latilla's got the key. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That you may, but because of uh, table etiquette, I'm going to say everyone gets a vote on where it goes because this is a party decision. Oh. They, it will turn into PvP, though. No, it won't, because I won't allow it. Wait, really? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I will say Perfect. you have to go along with like it. Your character, your character doesn't have to agree with it, but you have to go along with it. Oh. Just out, of, just out of respect for your fellow player on a meta level. Oh, I thought that was a PvP so, setup. No. Okay. No. Okay. The, unless, um, unless both, uh, you know, whatever players are involved, like choose to want to have a fight and are uh, agreeing to it. To Beth uh, looks between Phasos, Honeymoon, and Latilla, uh, and she kind of like does like that nervous like scratch to the neck kind of thing. She's like, so one door, huh? That what it seemed with the magenta one. Honeymoon is, is racking her brain trying to decide whether it's more useful to get the easy treasure here or get this guy out when he could potentially be useful and get them to the actual, like, goodies of the Golden K. That's where Latilla is sitting. She's just... We would we would fare better with a guide. He's a local. Uh, yeah, honey, a Honeymoon... A local who we can actually speak to, even. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, as tempting as that treasure over there is, it's only... How deep One are your tiny... current pockets? Well, yes, it's only a tiny fraction of what we're sure to find if we go in deeper. Uh, Phasos is going to look at the, the Longingly. Treasure. Longingly. <laughs> He's Honeymoon gonna steeple will... his fingers. Honeymoon joins him in, in gazing longingly. <laughs> <laughs> Tibet is going Honeymoon to is longingly pouting. gaze at both of them, longingly gazing <laughs> into the treasure, because there's only room for two people over there. <laughs> Sit on, sit on honeymoon shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Do you well, want me to hold you up? <laughs> no. You, oh, you sorry, know, not me. You know, if Phasos wants the money that bad, then is it really the right choice to go? <laughs> <laughs> she says, as she says to Latilla, as she's looking over at the other two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honeymoon. Honeymoon is pouting next to Phasos, steeply his fingers. Uh. And she ju she just kind of says, um, "Oh, I know it's more useful to do the other thing, but it hurts to let it go." It's so pretty. Indeed. In this, we are in agreement. Ah, oh, so it would seem. <sighs> we may I be. Know. Yeah, she she kind of looks up and uh, and she's like, uh, "We may have a contentious working relationship, Mister Jerome, but we're quite alike." It seems so. And her, her pout does turn into a slight little smirk, and she'll go back to rejoin the gals. Okay. Bezos yeah. stays staring at the, the, the money, but he <laughs> so, will resigningly allow them to make the other choice. So, yeah. player votes. I'm going down the list. Uh, Lotilla, Clyde or Treasure? Clyde! To Beth, Clyde or Treasure? Clyde. Oh. Honeymoon, Clyde or Treasure? Wide. Phasos? Treasure. <laughs> well, you've been outvoted, unfortunately. <laughs> yes, it's true. He you... knows, but he wanted to yeah, say it. He, yes, he, he staunchly says we should do the treasure, but he agrees that if everyone else is going to do it, he's not going to challenge it. You, you slip the key into the wall, and whoosh, the arcane wall vanishes, opening the path not only to Clyde, Hemsworth, Bartholomew the Seventh, but also the green key. He throws out his arms. Oh, a thousand times, thank you. I not shall soon forget this generosity. I owe you my life as well as the life of all of my spiders. Oh, I do hope one day I can introduce them to you that they may shower you with many lovely kisses. Phasos <laughs> <laughs> kind of uh, grimaces for a moment before regaining composure. Yes, I'm sure they'll be uh, very appreciative and that will be very useful. Don't worry, darlings, he calls out. Don't worry, darlings, daddy's coming home, and he's going to bring you such a large meal. I hope you like four. Clyde. Oh, yes, yes, you, of course. Before leaving, we would like you as a guide. 
So, oh, of course. Once you finish with feeding your children, please meet us back at the door. Oh, yeah, well, it might take me a little while to head back to the nest, but if you're willing to wait, it should only take me about half an hour to go back there and then head on back. I'm very fast with my claws, you see. I'm a very good digger. That is perfectly fine. <laughs> yes. Very and good. She will let him pass. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. He, yeah. he kind of jauntily walks out. He fixes his bow a little bit, his, his bow tie, hat. and mm. uh, gives you a little tip of his hat and walks <laughs> on out. Yeah. I want to get the key this time. Then come on. Yeah. I'm going to get it. Yeah. You know, I'm, totters over. I'm genuinely surprised and proud of you guys. I thought you were going to go with the treasure. They're not dumb. <laughs> it wasn't an easy decision, Joseph. <laughs> Considering <laughs> the characters litter. that you made, I, I thought yeah. you would, you really would. If it wasn't for the fact that Phasos made the comment earlier that he did, <laughs> at, that Tabeth is spiteful <laughs> enough to hate him now instantly, <laughs> she would have gone for the treasure. And we would have been uh, at an impasse. Yep. Hun and Honeymoon sees sees getting the guide out as a way to get more treasure in the long run. All exactly. right. You pick up yeah. the green Honeyman key. Takes the key. Yay! Zaz -za -za zing And you are able to head to the green arcane door. When you do exit this hallway... Oh, no. Then they get back I figured. Door. Yeah. You see the statue moves hey. and <gasps> takes a step down um. from its pedestal and it stabs its stony sword into the ground and speaks in common. Oh. In common, okay. Okay. You allowed that etter cap escape. Yes. Was that did we not? Was, was he in prison for a reason? Interesting. I, yeah, I mean it's an etter cap with a top hut. He is kind of interesting. <laughs> I have been watching you. <laughs> My perception of you has changed. For the better? Yeah, in like a good way? No yeah, response. Like just, uh, yeah, she gives <laughs> honeymoon just she like gives leaning this... around uh phases this massive shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> she we... gives the smile of that like one dude from um, America's Got Talent or whatever, where she's just like, Come on. Come on. <laughs> we shall see. Oh. The stony statue walks back up onto its pedestal and resumes its position. And all the gargoyles fall and crumble to pieces. <laughs> we oh. did it. We solved the gargoyle puzzle. It was to not be evil. Well, difficult at least. In party. <laughs> yeah. At least not to be completely blinded by greed. <laughs> and I assume you put the key into the door. It vanishes. Yes. And yep. this might be a good stopping point, but there's a little bit more. How much time do you guys have? I know we started a um. little late. I'm good to go. I'm good to keep going. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can go a little bit more. Okay. Well, uh, like maybe an hour. An hour? No. No. Okay. Hmm. Thirty minutes. Yeah, I cannot do that. Yeah, we're gonna call it here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, awesome. Uh, thank you guys for playing. Uh, this was thank good. Thank you for I, 